Full Moon Rises on another episode of Werewolf Gaming, where this time around we're going to be exploring a tabletop game all about deceit and mob mentality. Wait, before you unsubscribe, hear me out. Board games are one of the oldest forms of gaming, and they deserve to be recognized too every once in a while. Okay, okay, I'll do Castlevania or something next month, just let me have this one divergence from video games. Ugh. Well, for those of you who stuck around, let's explore One Night Ultimate Werewolf. The game Werewolf, or Mafia, they're both the same game under different aesthetics, pits two or more sides against one another. When playing Werewolf, players are randomly, and most importantly, secretly, sorted into two major factions, the Villagers and the Werewolves. For the Villagers to win, they must root out and kill at least one Werewolf, and for the Werewolves to win, they must remain hidden and get everyone to kill a villager instead. One Night Ultimate Werewolf is exactly what it says on the tin. A game of werewolf that only lasts two rounds, one day and one night to play out in its entirety. The nighttime stage where everyone closes their eyes and acts out their rules in order, starting with the werewolf usually. Once the night is over and the morning has vanquished the horrible night, everyone gets five to ten minutes to talk amongst themselves and try to figure out what happened at night. Thing is, Depending on what happened, you might not be what you started out as, since there are cards that can swap cards with other players. That's why it's in your best interest to both figure out what happened as fast as you can, and immediately use that information to your advantage to fool other players. Of course, other players will be trying to do the same thing, so it ends up a tangled web of truths, half-truths, and lies. Now you might be thinking to yourself, there's no way a board game about werewolves could be based on something in real life. To which I say, of course it is! During the many witch hunts of the European ages, accusations of lycanthropy were often mixed in with the witches and warlocks. For example, the Valais witch trials that took place in the now modern day Switzerland also included accusations of people turning into werewolves and killing cattle. And in Estonia, werewolf trials were more commonplace than accusations of using other magics. And we can't forget the case of Peter Stump, the most well documented werewolf trial of the Middle Ages. After being tortured, Stump confessed to many atrocities, as well as having been given a belt by the devil that could transform him into a wolf. And for the confessed crimes, he was executed via wheel. Which doesn't sound that bad, but trust me, it was. Aren't you glad you live in this era? And that's it for this episode. Tune in next time where I keep my end of the bargain and do an episode on the Castlevania series. So until then, happy gaming, villagers! Or are you werewolves? Either way, I'll see you when the next moon rises.